Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Mortgage and Real Estate Podcast by the Pinnacle Loans. My name is Chris Giannino, and it's great to be back with you today. I have uh, my brother Pete Giannino and Bill Lally on today, and uh, we are just going to get back at it a little bit. I mean, this is the first day of spring in the real estate industry, uh, January 2nd. So uh, everything's a go, and I just want to kind of get everybody together, talk about, just get the, the, the boys together today, recap 2023 a little bit, and then talk about forecast on 2024, and uh, take it from there. But Pete and Bill, what's up, boys? Welcome to the show. Happy New Year. I got to celebrate with both of you uh, throughout the past week and a half, and uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's great to be back at it, though. You know, I'm ready to get back at the swing of things. We didn't take much of a break this year um, because we're very optimistic about 2024 and the market. But, but uh, nevertheless, got we plenty of family jobs. time in. Yes, we do. <laughs> we love our job. So, you know, we're excited. Yeah, we, we're always excited for the new year to start and new numbers, right? And, and like uh, setting that up with uh, uh, big goals, and um, exciting to have an opportunity. Just like it's it's a clean slate for everything, and no matter what, you know. Um, I know I personally. I think that just the industry as a whole was really shook up last last year in 2023. And um, I mean, I would I would be I would think it would be safe to say that 2023 was probably. <laughs> one of the most volatile years in the market. I mean, when you're talking about the massive swings in rates, and by the way, I just want to let you know, when you guys hear background noise, we're, we're out, we want to get out in the public, we want to check out new places. Today we are at Piper's Tea and Coffee, uh, awesome establishment on Kings Highway near Chippewa, um, and just a great place. Great coffee, great setting, great atmosphere. Uh, check it out sometime. It's near our office on the hill, so we figured it'd be a good good place, but I just want to give you a heads up when you hear background noise. Um, but yeah, you're right, Bill. The, the market, I mean, it was it was a well, a lot of people left the industry. Let's put it that way. The swings were huge. Yeah, I think the we talked about 2023 as being volatile. It's it was it, the word uncertainty kind of permeated society in so many aspects. But um, you know, in a, in a world of uncertainty. Um, there's a lot of hope and endurance that, that resides, and that's why we're here today. Um, you know, that's how we operate, and looking forward to, to a great year. Absolutely. I, th- I, think, I think that uh, our hope for 2024 is well-placed. Um, everybody's working hard already, and happy, happy to be back at it this morning. Yeah, I think, I think there was a big difference of in 2008 to this 2023 it's, it's funny because it, it wasn't like it was an economy recession or anything it was just a, it was like a, a mortgage recession basically mortgage companies yes um, i don't think many industries were hit quite like the mortgage industry and and i think real estate to an extent yeah for sure and, yeah, and when, when, when the mortgage industry, industry did prosper, there were many industries that were hit very, very hard as well. Exactly. Yeah, we, we were the, the mortgage industry was the only place there was money in, in, during, during uh, recession times and stuff. Because, I mean, that's what keeps it going. It lowers everybody's payment. Everybody, it gives some relief. And that industry was, you know, flourishing. But yeah, 2023, I, I, I saw, I think it was, I mean, we are seeing more broker um, business, uh, more broker channels getting into the business. Uh, I think that, you know, should probably, it, but we're also, we, we also definitely witnessed some big heavy hitters with the home loan expert and um, uh, Jerry Kelly. Dot com. Oh, the roofer? Yeah, the roofer. Oh, he okay. got out of the business. Uh, okay. um, gotcha. So, but, you know, and from, oh. from several things, but, but there was also uh, Keller Mortgage. Keller Mortgage is another big one that, that is out of the business. They're gone. Um, you know, so 
which which we've talked about it before. I mean, if you can't make that work, then you just I don't know. I don't. You just you can't really. You, you, you don't deserve to be here. <laughs> and you're talking yeah. about the collective you, of course. Right, right. The collective you. So, but now you have, you know, players like us and other players that that weren't necessarily mainstream competitors against some of these folks that are starting to uh, really compete. Well, yeah, you're exactly right. And I think that goes a long way. I mean, you could, whatever you focus on expands. You know, we could focus on the the down market or we could focus on the opportunities that the market presents which will lead me into my pinnacle point for today is gratitude i've you know whenever the new year comes around it it always is a time to reflect on the things in your life what you want to keep the same what you want to change and one thing when i reflect on the on 2023 is is gratitude for our company to to be strong and massive gratitude towards our clients that have worked with us and trusted us with their purchase transactions and all of the real estate partners that we work with that have made introductions to Pinnacle. So just tons of gratitude towards them. That That's uh, something I did want to get out there because, you know, it was a challenging year. Not to say, oh, what a difference a day makes, but to an extent... It is. I mean, things right now in t- the difference between January of 2023 and January 2024 is there's a lot of differences. But one difference is, I guess it's on the certainty level, but the Fed, I mean, there's they've established that they're done cutting rates. I mean, we were in January 23. It was, we, we knew they weren't done cutting rates, and they weren't. Are increasing rates. I'm sorry, increasing rates, and they weren't. They they increased them significantly. So there's a lot of optimism for the people that are currently in real estate going into 2024. Um, as far as rates, um, who knows? Inventory, perhaps, and and all those boring topics. But the bottom line is um, that there's opportunity, and it, it comes back to what you're going to focus on. Right. And, and really it was, it was, it was more, it was more than just interest rates. Like we weren't necessarily, yeah, we, we're always going to navigate, navigate through, you know, just like everybody else and every entrepreneur out there. And it's going to be more, it's going to be faster and faster change as we, as we continue in this business and continue in any business, it's going to be faster and faster and faster. And where your company's not even going to look at all the same business model um even next year won't be the same business model we're seeing that now uh almost like on a one year to two year cycle of of what we're in you see complete changes about our strategy to capture business in the market and i think that i would say i would say that that what we went through in 2023 was had so much more amplified um, attention because it was about inflation. It was really about inflation and inflation was running rampant and, and to the point where they just went all in real fast with rates to, to stop the bleeding as much as they could. And, and I think that was successful. Um, well, yeah, on that same note, some of the optimism, too, the the rate at which inflation has decreased has outpaced the rate of which rates have dropped. So it's still a very, very tight market out there based on what is actually happening with the numbers. Rates should be lower than they currently are based on the, the spread of the 10-year Treasury bond and what the mortgage rates typically are, there's still a bigger right. spread in there than normal, and they're being very, very conservative. It's tight. They got, everything's tight. So that, that leads to a little bit more optimism, knowing that there is more room for the rates to drop. Believe me, anything can happen in this market. We've, that's been shown to us go, and proven. But 
Right. And if it, here, what I, what I'm seeing and what I'm seeing a lot of, these guys are all students of, oh, I don't know what that guy, uh, Keynesian or Keynesian, the Keynesian uh, economic theory and, and all this stuff, but uh, with the fiat currencies and stuff. But the, these guys understand that in the 80s, they took their foot off the gas too early and they had a inflation shot back up. Um, and so most of this entire talk, yeah, I can, you just keep hearing them talk about, we just don't want to, we don't want to, it's a not time to just, you know, go down yet because that's what they did. They did it too early last time. And they had to reverse course in the eighties. You can see the charts of, interest rates they they shot them way up and then they're like okay we can we can come back down because that was only a few year period too mm -hmm. but you know it wasn't like oh it was, you know it was it was a few years um but uh but they made a terrible mistake and they brought them down too much and inflation went back and then we're back in kind of like oh god what do we do freak out mode and that's where we i think we got out of in 2023 somehow um, it just kind of, it was okay, you know, now I, and, and I think, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of exiting of the industry, almost half, but that again, is kind of, kind of the same as it's kind of usual, you know? in the industry it's like they, they they also doubled with the big refinance but they hired half you know and then they lay off half so right and then it's always you know the the main guys stick it out that's why they're saying been around since 1904 those kind of things you know so yeah no, every, everything's all... everything's based on for sure they're being very conservative and when the fed comes out and makes announcements they're not they're not talking to the general consumer they're they're talking to the stock market and the people on wall street so it, that's why the words mean so much it's not so much that they're going to do this or do that everything's based off of the words i mean so based i mean when you think about going into 2024 what's your big takeaway pete like what what would you um what's a main point that you're considering either personally or professionally when it comes to going into 2024 <coughs> Well, I think it's it's it, my main point actually addresses my personal life and my professional life. And um, I had a discussion um, over the last couple of days with someone about how you affect everyone you encounter. And, you know, I, it, it, I had my first opportunity this morning to put this on display when I walked into this coffee shop. And, you know, we're not going to... Uh, we don't have to fake it in life to make a difference in, with each person we encounter. So we can actually have a genuine, positive, hopeful attitude towards every person. And um, I'm, I'm really going to set my resolve toward that for 2024, not just have an intention, but actually set my mind um, and resolve to make that part of my life. I think that, you know, you can't help but but hope that has a professional impact as well. But I think first and foremost, that will have a personal impact for me and, and the people I'm with. And that, that, that I'm going to, I'm going to piggyback on that briefly, just with respect to real estate. And, you know, we can't help, but focus on the financial components that Chris and Bill alluded to and that, that permeate the public thought process. However, person that's I, I put that in the professional category of life whereas the personal um category of life might address the question where do i want to live and people are trying to throw a dart at a moving dartboard to find out when they should buy a home and instead of finding the place they want to live and 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 attacking that um and and you know that's I think we're going to see that as, as people decide people are working from home more. Um, they are spending more time with 
their families, et cetera. And where you live is going to be the most important component as opposed to how much you're paying for it at a single moment in time. Um, you know, I love it. I love it, Pete. Uh, you, you've made a, you've made, you've made a huge impact on, on both on everybody that you meet, but with Chris and I, you know, we've obviously, you know, known each other for, Oh shoot. I don't even know 30 years or so. And, uh, but yeah, you've, and, and then, and joining the team right at the perfect time to have a steady hand and, um, have somebody who, you know, has, has, could experience the ride with us is pretty cool. Absolutely. Um, because it wouldn't change. It. Hey, you know, Chris and I have been on that ride for our whole entire lives. It's amazing. We we're built for it. And then, <laughs> and, and it was cool. And, um, you know, to see, but you have, I always say, what was it? It was, it was some fighting movie that it was act weak when you're strong, act strong when you're weak, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, it was like fist or no, it was, oh shoot. Anyway, pretty awesome movie, whatever it was. <laughs> um, anyway, that, that's how I always think about you. I always think that you're, you are, you really give effort to make people feel important. So you've already, and, and you can see that, that that's why you, too would that's important to you well that's that's important to you well it's I also something that. that that you can control it's it's you know when you when you're setting a a goal or you want to have some type of tweak in behavior or whatnot it's it's always it it's nice because it is actually something you can control and then um setting a habit of uh, remembering is a key to that. And I think that's that's a that's an excellent mindset. You've already been and displayed that you're excellent at doing that, and always have been. But I mean, obviously, we can all we can all take a chapter from that book. Yep. And I think that's that's a that's a great insight. And how about you, Bill? What what about you going into 2024? Either you know, or just any 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 pinnacle point that you well, uh, I'm gonna, want to take away? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you back a little bit. What, what Pete said, because that, that also talked, uh, what I, if you want, if you want to say, um, what, what type of business do you want to have? If you want to ask yourself that question, I think one way to find that answer is, what services do you really enjoy and what do you really like about it? And then think about what the, that service has and think about what that service does not have. Like Bill, I love uh, that. Keep it going. I know exactly. And, and, and so what I'm seeing is I keep looking at Amazon for, for me personally. Okay. And I know it would change for what people would like. Some people might not like Amazon, but Amazon Pete, do you have a personal relationship with anyone at Amazon? No, sir. Right. Do you and 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 do when you think Amazon, do you think of any human being? <laughs> Quite the opposite. Yeah, n not not at all. And so it almost is more secure because it is not a human. Right. That you're it's a machine and an algorithm that I trust proven results it comes to my door when I, when I want it. I can get it quicker than anything. I don't have to drive out and crash or get a ticket or get a flat tire or whatever, or wear and tear on the car or whatever it is, um, just to go get that item. I can get it, you know, the next day without any of that stuff. So I, I started looking uh, like, but what Pete said was perfect. It's, there's a personal side of things and a professional side of the business. When Pete's saying that he's going to make, you know, he, he understand it impacts every encounter impacts, you know, who they are as a person. The same kind of thing is, 
in, in our business, I want it to be, you know, if I'm, that's, that's why also there's just a profession. I think there's a, there's a, that professionalness of Amazon has to be, is like an aha to me where there is no human factor involved besides the guy that drops it off and he's usually pleasant, but I would rather not see him. Yeah, but what I if you rather... want to? Yeah, but what if what if you want to? What if you want to return something? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, what the hell do you do then? I think you drop it off at Kohl's or something. <laughs> it, it's pretty yeah. easy. I, Maybe. It, it yeah, is. it is. Uh, no, I, it, <laughs> but I mean, but it, I get what you're saying. I, but you're. Have you returned it? You're. You, but you're making the correlation with the personal aspect. But you're also. You're making a connection between a process. And um, like a computerized process without personal touch, he's talking about a personal touch, but you're 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 bringing something together with it. Yeah, and he he's also a step. He's described. You're right. You're right. He's you're described right. a red carpet treatment because that's what Amazon provides a red carpet treatment with technology, and and Bill, you talked about creating trust. You have trust in Amazon. You have trust in that process. You're talking about reducing frustration. You don't have to go out. You don't have to, you know, risk the car accident, et cetera. Um, and, and, of course, the technology that's attractive, the, the really efficient technology. And those are, those are yeah. amazing components. No, absolutely, because, yeah, it, it, Pete, it is, Chris, think about when, you know, when our, our old buddy, um, Shukar and, different people like the pioneers of, of the of mortgage banking and the pioneers of like referral partners with real estate agents, real estate offices, those were all relationship heavy. I mean, they, they were working with you and still today, I mean, still today, that's where a lot of that business, it, it's, it's so relationship heavy. However, as we, and, and as we move to a new, you know, somewhat era, it doesn't matter about the relationship because if I can get it from Amazon and, and it, it's, it's cheaper, it's faster, it's better. They beat my relationship, my personal relationship, but on the professional side, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to use this efficient service that I don't have to get out of my car, that I don't have to go to a title company to close that I don't have to, you know, um, but, but that's, but, that's, Real estate then, right now is not obviously. I mean, that's that's the direction. But in real estate, people that we've seen still prefer um, they prefer to speak with somebody and talk to somebody for the most part. Now, not initially, not when they fill out their application, but throughout the process. And maybe that's because that's what they're advised to do which is understandable as well because it's such a major transaction. If anything goes wrong, there's so many liabilities that could take place. So I think clearly it, that's the direction, yeah, but exactly. you know, I mean, if, you, if so that's, that's why it's very important to provide that option. I mean, there's a whole generation out there that's going to prefer not to talk to anybody from beginning to end. So you, you want to have those options and you also want to be able to have the personal touch. I mean, and be able to, because in our, for us personally, for our own business, I mean, ours is clearly still extremely relationship driven, extremely. I mean, people refer to us because of our relationships and because of the trust that they have in our process. But, but you're right. A lot of it comes to the trust that they have in our process. Yep. Absolutely. The trust that they have in our process is they know it's going to get done. They know it's going to be efficient, quick, and the least amount of frustration for the end user. We need to meet expectations at every stage of the process from from that initial phone call, email, text message with the real estate right. agent to the initial one with the prospective client to how they handle our technology to how they navigate through the process and collect data, collect information, and then, of course, go to that closing table with, with no issues um, and, and be satisfied and just not even worry about that. Worry about opening that new home. So 
for the people listening, what if you were looking at 2024? Okay, remember how there was, when, when we were last year and, and the previous year when there was 30 to 40 offers on every house? And say there was 30 offers on a house. Well, 29 of those people did not win the contract. Okay, so we know a lot of those people are still in the market for homes. What do you say to the people that are maybe put it on hold the last half of 2023 because they were so frustrated on the multiple offer situation? Then the interest rates went up significantly to touch 8%. And now um, they read news headlines and they see that the rates maybe have decreased a little bit. That's really the only news that's come around. There hasn't been much talk on inventory or whatnot because we'll figure that part out whenever, whenever we start going in the next couple of months. But what do you say to those people who are, re, who are considering re-entering the market to purchase a home? Oh, yeah, it, it's the time to do it. I mean, right now, we've actually had... Uh, it's, it's always, I, I say it's always the time. It's always the time. If you can do it, if you can do it, meaning you have a... Uh, a job that you've had for a couple of years or you have um, self-employed for a few years and you have money in the bank or you have bank statements that will show income. Uh, if you can do it, it doesn't matter what day of the week or what interest rates are or what the market is or whatever. It's a fluid market. You have to adjust with it, but ultimately you have to get the house right now because there's no, I mean, if rates go down, uh, if rates go down and inventory is still down, which it will be for the next five to 10 years, at least five to 10 years, because you can't build a house that fast. I mean, look at what you can have. Babies are born faster than houses are built. Right. And you're not buying a stock. You're buying, you're buying shelter. Yep. You're buying shelter and a place to live for you and your family. This is not something that, you know, you're, you don't sell a house and then not go buy another house or go move somewhere else. You, If you, if you sell a house, you're buying another house or you're renting something. So you, it's shelter. You have to look at it as a home. So for people who are considering those things, you, you only live once. You got to buy the house when you can buy it or when you need it. And if, if there's opportunities to refinance and pay less, then you pay less. But either way, over the long term, we've only seen it appreciate. And that makes sense because there's only so much uh, room on planet Earth. And and so if you wait for rates to go down, quote unquote, then values are likely to be going up. So what you think you're saving um, is is not going to exist, unfortunately. Um, and mean, yeah, I, I, meanwhile, I, you lose the house. Yeah, I mean, it, it's real. It it was really clear to me when when the one report from the Fed said that. Uh, debt to income ratios were averaging over 47%. And that was around that October, November timeframe when the rates were at their highest. I, 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 and Pete, you know, like 50% is about the threshold on a conventional loan, like for even getting approved. Yep. So, I mean, if you're at 47% and rates were where they were, um, that those are averages, all right? So millions of loans over that period of time you have an average of 47% for conventional financing was happening. Uh, that's the ceiling unless incomes rise. So unless incomes rise, you can't raise above like 8% because none of the loans could get purchased by Fe Fre Freddie and Fannie. So basically you have, you have that being, uh, there's two things that can basically happen. Wages will increase, which will not happen because of corporate greed. And the co corporate, it's not necessarily corporate greed. Those guys bought a bigger boat <laughs> and they need more money. Right. right. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like, well, I can't really give you a raise because I didn't know the fuel was going to be so much for this boat or that house in, you know, that, that house in Fiji was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really expensive. So, you know, so the wages like have pretty much stayed pretty, pretty darn low. Um, so you, you kind of, we could, we could actually see, okay, boom, 50% halts all mortgages. 47% was around 8% interest rates. And, and the other one, 
thing to say at that time, 35% higher than ever before, higher than ever before, but 35% of all new loans were FHA loans. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like that ratio. So, because it would go to 57%. Okay, so yeah. there might be a lot of people listening to this as well that you know are familiar, but we're obviously in, engorged in the market. We listen to um, podcasts, we read about the market daily because we have to be knowledgeable about timely decisions when it comes to our clients. Pete, can you give us uh, maybe a breakdown of what happened when, with rates and in the market over the past two months? Basically, just to give an idea on where we're at now, moving forward in 2024. So maybe October, November, December. Now we're going into January. Yeah, and, and uh, fortunately, rates have actually dipped a bit um, over the last couple of months. It's been a certainly a, a gradual move, but um, for you know, people purchasing homes today are going to be paying. Um, are going to be able to secure interest rates that are noticeably less than than people who purchased um, in in early fall, late summer. Yeah, I'd say mid mid to upper sixes, and in some case, uh, mid to lower sixes. Currently, right. November, we touched eight percent, and in October, we were um, <laughs> probably in the uh, mid to upper sevens. So. And it it wasn't very much different. I mean, we were in this in the range that we're in now. Um, I would say in August, and so it's not that rates are so much lower right now. It's just there was no certainty on if this roller coaster ride was just going to continue to go up, 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 up. But there's there's consumer confidence and there's con confidence in the industry with with the rate of which inflation has decreased and um, and and folks that doesn't mean like these prices uh, of goods have went down hmm. it just means that the rate of inflation has not continued at the same pace that it was so we're getting things a little bit more under control but right now I think People don't have a problem buying in the sixes and whatnot. People, it seemed like from our experience, have had issues, and this is across the board, doing anything in the United States when there's so much volatility. It's, it's not stable. It's like a different, it's like a third world country when rates go from 2.75% to 8% <laughs> in such a small period of time. People want stability. So now that there is a little bit more stability, the Fed has come out and made announcements. There actually is a lot of tightening, but there's much more room for the rates to to either stay the same or slight decreases. Like, it, it's un, in the past, rates have never went up two points in such a quick period of time. It's always been a gradual incline or, or a gradual decline as far as rates go to an extent. I mean, obviously, back in 2009, there were some, some larger fluctuations in rates, or 2008, 2009. But under normal conditions, it's usually very gradual. And that could be where we're at and could not be. We might be in a new norm of, of a little bit more volatility because there's, there's, there's some unpredictable factors out there in the world. You know, we have pandemics that pop up. I guess uh, there's <laughs> the media, which is much more people's fingertips. I mean, yep. you, you, you can't even turn around or look at your phone without getting an update that you didn't even ask which for. Which impacts decision-making, which impacts the overall which market impacts condition. Fear. Right. Uh, it, it impacts any, however they, you know, however the news is portrayed. So <laughs> there's opportunity. So bottom line is, if you need a house, you find the right location and you, and you get the house if you can afford it. Like I like what Bill said. I mean, it's always the right time and it just always has been. I mean, the people that have bought houses two, three years ago, some of them, it's changed their lives drastically because of the amount of equity that they have right now. And people that have waited were not able to gain that type of wealth. So it's real estate. It's, it's been the number one, um, it's the number one method to gaining wealth in the United States and always has been. Yeah. It, it, it's funny what our perspectives are, you know, what we've, we, a lot of the audience in, in, in real estate is used to 
three percent rates and and that's because that was an unusual moment in time you know but that's what what we're accustomed to i think about um my daughter's birthday was a couple weeks ago and just to talk i'm gonna give this final story about perspective and um you know we went out to breakfast for her birthday 17 years uh, well eight i'm sorry got two daughters got them confused 19 (laughs) years old uh, 19 year old birthday and we went for breakfast and she got an omelet with hash browns and it was $18 and a yeah. pa- and there was a pancake involved and she kept saying repeatedly I think she said five times during the meal I can't believe what a great deal this is and I'm I, you know I had a four person breakfast with water uh, pancakes eggs and hash browns for $90 and um I told her, I, I just kept laughing at her perspective at how, you know, what a great bargain that this was. Of course, she wasn't paying for any of it. But um, that's what, you know, that's the new perspective in life. Um, what's in, you know, what's in front of you. So let's, 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 let's keep some perspective um, and recognize, you know, what we're talking about is your home, not about every dollar that's involved. Um, and I know I, I cut Chris. Yeah, I, I think I, I cut you off, Bill. <laughs> no, no. I think I think the, the same thing. I except I guess I guess the person that's spending the money is like, hold on, I think something's wrong. <laughs> I thought she was gonna say like five times that something's wrong because the omelet was eighteen bucks. <laughs> I wish she would have. Right, because that's what I've been kind of noticing. Like, uh, that's kind of something's wrong here because this uh, this hamburger's. Eighteen dollars, <laughs> right. but but I mean that's we always joked around. It, it was um, I shoot. I think I was joked around with Chris. I I don't I, I know I joked around. Maybe I said to my dad. I don't know or, or a comedy routine I was thinking about when I was real young. That basically kids are gonna have to go up to their dad and be like, Hey, Dad, can I get like a million dollars? I'm going to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no stopping it. So why wouldn't that happen at some point? And yep. it sounds so crazy to us, but same with when our dad said that he used to go to the movies for a dime, a right. dime. I can't, I mean, a dime. <laughs> you actually gave them a dime. Where could he find a dime? Isn't yeah, where they I mean, also it, carried buckets of uh, a bail, like uh, a bucket of beer, but not a bucket of bottles, a bucket of beer, just beer back from the house for maybe a nickel. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Those right. were the days, and the milk and everything. I mean, it was it was always like uh, there was the, it, that was when you had smell of vision. Yeah, you know? right, right, they, right. They, they they would spray smells in the movie theaters, but I mean, for a dime, and you're spraying, it and you, I mean, it's like, and you get the spray and all that for a dime. Right. So anyway, that just sounds outrageous to us. Yeah. Because times uh, have changed. Uh, uh, yeah. But so you don't think I gonna... should? You don't think I should wait to buy a house? You don't think things are getting any cheaper? That's exactly where no, we're going. No, yeah, that that house is going to be. Everyone's going to. Everyone's going to be a millionaire in I would say ten to fifteen years almost. Well, like I'll tell you. Think about when you were. But millionaire is not going to mean the same thing. Well, think about when you were a kid, and. I'm just talking about like two years ago, <laughs> but when you were a kid, but think about when you thought about a million dollar house, what that looked like. I mean, it looked like a castle compared to what an actual million dollar house is today in St. Louis. Oh God. We're talking in St. Louis. We're not even talking about California, New York, anywhere on the coast. So, you know, get the house. Well, that's Talk show. to a professional wants, that can get, who wants to be a million? give you good advice. And uh, right. it's chances are things are going to work out for you. Guess what? If you turned out to to uh, make a decision that didn't fit well with you after the fact, you can always sell it and probably make a profit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and yeah, and and to all the uh, to any young person out there, to get this, get these podcasts into the young generation, the guys that you know. Uh, the 18 year olds to 22 year olds and stuff, the people who really want to make something happen, start investing early and we can show you how to do it. Um, we, and, and start getting like a bunch of different rentals and, and property because that, 
that's pretty much where it's at. And but it does take work. It takes people to actually work and like stay focused and have well and a plan have, and a plan. Yeah. I mean, and also the next two podcasts that we have coming up that we have guests lined up this week. The first one talks a lot about uh, the his successful Airbnbs that he's been uh, purchasing and just um, taking off with it. Taking off with it. I mean, that's a very lucrative avenue if done properly. And then also after that, um, Matt Cap with uh, Deal Machine is coming on. And he's talking about an wow. app that has really made investors um, be able to shave off immense amount of time when doing their research to purchase investment properties. So two really great guests coming on that give you real world experience and perspective on purchasing for investment. One way too, like I'll just touch on it to give a nugget out there, but a lot of people, if you're just getting in, uh, we've done many loans like this in 2023 actually, where a, an individual, a young individual in their early 20s might come in to purchase a house. They'll live in the house uh, for 12 months. Then they'll rent that house out to somebody else, purchase a new primary residence, live there for 12 months, rent that out to the next person, or they might buy a two-family and then they'll live in one half of it, rent the other half out, and pay for their entire mortgage. And then after 12 months, and I say 12 months because that's how long you have to stay in a loan as your primary residence before you can purchase another loan as your primary residence, unless there are specific reasons that demonstrate um, it's logical for you to do so. And we could talk about those in further detail, but basically, when you're young you can really build a portfolio of investment properties while you live in the other half of it and have somebody else pay your rent. It's a, it's yeah. a very achievable and, and uh, you don't have to have any experience to be successful at it. No, no matter what house, the, no matter what house you get, if you're 20 years old, by the time, no matter what house you're going to buy right now, by the time you retire at 65, every single one of those houses, no matter what, we know where, where you started. It will be above a million dollars. It will be above one million dollars. So, like, think. I mean, there's no real better investment than what uh, housing prices do when when the Fed injects money, which they have to inject money. Otherwise, there's no money in the economy. So they have to continue feed the beast, and everything will continue to go up. And you know, the American dream. By the so, way, none of this. This is not really that much of a news flash, right? This has been going on on the coast for many years prior to this. We're just in the middle of America, so it's taken a bit. But those million-dollar right. homes are all over the place. Um, all right, boys. Yeah, cool. should we wrap it up? Yeah. Uh, have some closing thoughts. Pete, Bill, who can who can uh, send us off here? Um, gentlemen? I'm... Yep, go ahead. Pl- pleasure pleasure uh, starting the year off with you guys and, and with those listening. Uh, remember... Feed your mind, strengthen your body, um, have proximity to great people, make it a great year. Yeah, it's great. 